Hello and welcome to module 38 of chemical kinetics in transition state theory. Uh, in the remaining modules, we will switch gears a little bit and discuss the uh, last leg of this course. What we will discuss uh, now is calculating rate constant at constant energy, so in a different ensemble. So far we have been looking at how to calculate rate constant at a given temperature. But uh, let us say there is no bath, we have a constant energy simulation instead, constant energy system instead, how to calculate rate constants. We will start today with a rather simple treatment done by uh, these three gentlemen, uh, Rice, uh, Ramsberger and Cassell okay, in 1920s. And uh, today uh, we will interestingly take a little detour of permutations and combinations. All right, so uh, what I am teaching today, uh, you can find in this book by Steinfeld, Francisco and Hayes in chapter 11.5. I have also given to the more uh, interested readers the very original papers that were given in 1920s, by one by Rice and Ramsberger and the other by Kasser. All right. So uh, first let me be clear on what our goal is. We are trying to find rate at a given energy. So again I like drawing 1D surfaces. So this is some kind of a potential energy surface that we have drawn many many times. Uh, so far we were working at a constant temperature which means you have an ensemble of uh, states. Yeah, so this was we were working at con constant temperature. Now we will fix one energy here. Let me just use a different color so that this comes out well uh, in color red. So if I am at this given energy instead not at a temperature, what how do I calculate rate constant? That will be the focus now. So this is called a micro canonical ensemble. Okay, so far what we were discussing was the canonical ensemble which was at a given temperature. Uh, so let us proceed. Uh, what I am presenting you today is somewhat instructional, today and tomorrow. Uh, this uh, looks at a very, very simple model. This model was developed by these three gentlemen, Rice, Ramsberger and Kassel in 1927 and 28. Uh, so let us go through this model and uh, let us see what we learn from this. So our model consists of uh, just uh, imagine S harmonic oscillators. So these S harmonic oscillators uh, essentially refers to S let us say vibrations in the molecule. So I have S vibration somewhere in the molecule. And uh, for simplicity, we are going to assume all have the same frequency nu. The next point in the model is that we have one uh, particular harmonic oscillator, let us call that one to be S1. Uh, that coordinate represents the reaction coordinate. So therefore, if a certain amount of energy gets deposited in this reaction coordinate, the reaction will happen. Okay, so I have total energy E, oh, sorry I want the pen. So this is my mode S1, I am thinking of it as harmonic oscillator although I have drawn a little curve here. Okay. So uh, this is essentially representing Ea. So if I get energy in this one mode greater than Ea, my reaction will happen. Okay. So uh, uh, the final thing we are going to assume is that there is fast energy relaxation among the S oscillators. Uh, the consequence of this assumption really is that we can assume everything is equally distributed. Okay. So all modes have equal probability of getting the energy. It is just a matter of permutation and combination. So the rate of the reaction at a given energy, let me make it absolutely clear, rate as the function of energy will be proportional to 
the probability that mode 1 has energy greater than E f. Okay? So, uh, this is our essential model, this is our starting point. All right. uh, this model I want to cover not because it is most accurate model, it is not uh, very well used these days. We have a better model which we will discuss uh, post this model. But uh, my intention of covering this model is to give you a sense on how science works. Uh, we always start with the simplest possible model that we can get. Okay, and this is a simple enough model. And based on that simple model, then we make predictions. Uh, and, and predictions that can be experimentally verified. And see how this model tests against experiments. If it tests well, then our approximations are good. If it does not, then we better get a, a better model. Okay. All right. So, the rate is now proportional to uh, pr probability that the mode 1 energy is greater than Ef. Okay. So, we are going to assume quantization of energy in harmonic oscillators. So, let us assume that the total energy E represents j quanta of energy. Okay. Let E A represents m quanta of energy, where m is of course less than j. Uh, so, our question is what is the probability that uh, if there are j quanta of total energy, mode 1 gets m quanta or more. That is what is uh, proportional to the reaction rate. Okay. So, to calculate this, we will need a little detour of permutations and combinations, something that you have studied in your high school. And uh, I think I can easily say, safely say that none of you would have ever thought that this permutations and combinations can possibly be used in chemistry. But here we are. So, what we learn you never know when it becomes useful. Uh, so, if your younger uh, colleagues ask you why do we they ever teach you permutations and combinations, you tell them to calculate rate constants. Okay. So, uh, we are going to assume a few uh, principles from our 12th class knowledge of permutations and combinations. I am not going to derive these points. Uh, if I give you n distinct objects and I ask you what is the number of ways of arranging n distinct objects that is n factorial. Okay, so, I am simply stating it this is not hard to prove. Uh, but we are assuming this to be true. Uh, number of ways of arranging n objects out of which m are identical is given by n factorial over m factorial. Uh, in fact, I can generalize this that uh, m1 are and m2 are identical. I have two separate groups of m1 objects that are identical and m2 groups that are identical. Then what does what is the answer here? n factorial divided by m1 factorial into m2 factorial. Yeah. Uh, and finally, number of ways of choosing m objects out of n objects is given by m c m, which is n factorial divided by m factorial into n minus m factorial. Okay. So, we will start out by assuming these three points. All right. uh, so, our main question really is that we start out with uh, some quanta of energy that I will be distributing in my modes. So, I will start with a uh, related question that so that can be built up to answer that probability question we had earlier. What are the number of ways in which j identical balls can be put in s distinct containers? So, I have s distinct containers, uh, sorry, and I have uh, some number of balls with me j balls. How many ways can I put these balls in these containers? Each container can also have 0 balls, 0 to as many balls as you want to put. But I want the total number of balls to put is j. So, this is a little puzzle for you. If you like solving these puzzles, you should pause this video. This is a very interesting way to solve this one, very, very creative way to solve this actually. We will solve this right now. If you are interested in solving these kind of puzzles, which are always fun pause the video and solve it for yourself. Because once you see the solution, there is no turning back. 
then you have seen the solution and that creative answer you will never be able to come on your own. Somebody told you that creative answer. All right. So, we will start with an example. Uh, sorry, I over, I will erase uh, this thing. Let us start with an example and start building our intuition on how to solve it for a general problem. Uh, Let us assume I have two identical balls that I want to put in three containers. I have container 1, container 2, container 3 and I have two balls I want to put. So, uh, let us see how many different ways I can put it. I can put both of the balls here and nothing here and nothing here. I can put nothing here like this, uh, my bad, too many balls or I can put both the balls in the third box. Alternatively, I can put one ball here, one ball here, nothing here, one ball here, nothing here, one ball here, nothing here. So, these are all the 6 possibilities. There are only uh, 6 ways I can do it. There is no other way. I can put these 2 balls in these 3 containers, right? And remember the 2 balls are identical. So, uh, these are the only 6 possibilities. Now, comes the creative part of the uh, solution on how to solve this. Uh, I can write these 6 uh, configurations as a set of balls and sticks. Okay? So, just bear with me. I will draw 2 balls. I have 2 balls with me, so I draw 2 balls here. And I have 3 containers, right? So, 3 containers means essentially I have to partition these 2 balls into 3 partitions. Okay? So, to partition it in 3 ways, I will put 2 sticks. So, uh, let me draw this as these 2 sticks. When I draw a configuration like this, this is box 1, this here is box 2 and this here is box 3. Okay? So, I have put 2 in box 1, nothing in box 2 and nothing in box 3, which represents configuration number 1. Second configuration is given by, I draw 2 balls first one has nothing, second one has 2 and third has nothing. So, nothing here, 2 here, nothing here. Okay? The third one is this configuration, nothing here, nothing here, 2 here. So, uh, now, a uh, fourth configuration, I have one ball, one stick, one ball, one stick. So, I have one here, one here, nothing here. Similarly, let me write for the others. Like this. Uh, so, at the end of the day, I can write each configuration alternatively as an arrangement of 2 balls and 3 minus 1 sticks. Okay? So, if I want to generalize this, uh, every arrangement of j balls in S containers is identical to arranging J balls and S minus 1 sticks. Okay? So, I have uh, J balls with me here now and if I can put S minus 1 sticks in some fashion here, then this will correspond to some configuration and this configuration is unique each arrangement of j balls and s minus 1 sticks corresponds to a unique configuration and all possible configurations can be covered. So, all I have to do is to calculate the number of ways of uh, arranging j balls, j identical balls, let me make it absolutely clear. And S minus 1 identical sticks. Right? So, this is remember uh, we had already uh, told the answer for arranging n objects out of which m are identical. So, we have j plus s minus 1 objects. Right? 
I have j balls s minus 1 sticks, so total of j plus s minus 1 divided by j are identical and s minus 1 are another group of identical objects. So, this is the number of ways in which j identical balls can be put in s distinct containers. It is a very clever trick, all right. So, let us ask another puzzle to you. Uh, given that we have found this number of ways of finding j balls in s containers. Now, I ask you can you calculate uh, my bad, can you calculate the number of ways in which a maximum of j balls can be put in s containers. So, so far we had told that you have to put all j balls into these s containers, none, none of them have to be left out. Now, let us lift that restriction. Now, I am asking you, uh, you can put 0 balls in these s containers, you are free to put e only 1 ball among these s containers, you can put up to j balls in these s containers. So, how will you calculate that total? Again, if you enjoy solving these puzzles, this is your one chance to solve it, because in a minute I am going to provide you with an answer. And this is even more beautiful, this is a one line answer. If you strike the correct thought, the answer can be written in one line very simple, you do not have to do anything complex, there are very very complex ways of solving it, but there is one way of solving it which is one line answer. So, if you are interested, so pause the video and do it on your own, otherwise I am doing it now for you, all right. So, the number of ways in which up to j balls can be put in s containers, listen closely, it is beautiful. So, I have s containers. Now, I have to put up to j balls, right. So, I have less than equal to j balls here. Let us consider one more container. And put remaining balls here. Here, if any. Okay. So, I put uh, let us say only j minus 3 balls here. So, I will put the third ball in the s plus 1 container and make it up to j. So, whatever is left over I will put into this s plus 1 container. So, now you see the problem becomes this number of ways is the ways of putting uh, j balls exactly j balls in s plus 1 containers. So, we just use this formula with replacing s with s plus 1. So, this is nothing but j plus s uh, divided by j factorial s factorial. Okay. So, I told you it is a one line answer. All right. So, uh, we have worked a little bit of permutations and combinations today. And now we want to apply it to this uh, simple model that we have uh, presented uh, that the rate is proportional to the probability. And uh, we have total energy E which is uh, corresponds to j quanta. And uh, the first mode if it has more than m quanta of energy then the reaction happens. So, we have to calculate what is the probability of distributing these j quanta uh, among s oscillators such that one of the mode the first mode has more than or equal to m quanta. Okay. So, that we will do in the next module. Uh, so, today we have just presented to you the simple model that was developed by RR and K. We usually do not call out their full names, simply call their RRK. It has s oscillators all with the same frequency nu. And the rate of reaction is assumed to be proportional to the probability that mode 1 has energy E greater than Ea. Uh, I should put E1 here and we had looked uh, took a little detour of permutations and combinations. Who knew permutations and combinations is actually useful in chemistry in calculating rate constants, but uh, I hope to convince you that it is. And what we derive today is that the number of ways of putting j balls in s containers is j plus s minus 1 factorial divided by j factorial into s minus 1 factorial. And number of ways of putting up to j balls in s containers is given by this. Thank you very much.